Um, and uh, so, I, I, I guess uh, I will tell you this. So, whatever resources you use in this class, if it's uh, whatever it is that you are doing, if that's something that's helping you learn physics, I can give you um, um, blanket um, uh, assurance that whatever's helping you learn physics, it's okay. I, I, I think uh, ultimately uh, what you are graded on is how much physics you understand and whatever helped you understand the physics. I don't think I'm in a place to say that you can't do that if it helped you understand physics. Now, whatever it is that you do that doesn't help you understand physics, uh, you can guess correctly that there's a, something in the honor code uh, that will uh, correctly label that as an act of academic dishonesty. So if you're using a tool like a generative AI, as long as you are using it to helping you learn physics, hey, I think that's okay. Uh, if you are misusing it, if you are abusing it, then um, you will eventually get your comeuppance, whether that's in this class, uh, in terms of your final course letter grade, or maybe, you know, the career you, you go into, they expect you to know physics and you don't, and that's going to limit your career prospects. That's possible. So, um, so what I'm doing here is I'm not cheating. <laughs> uh, let me um, get a response from perplexity and uh, kind of critique its response. So I'm going to ask this question and then see what perplexity says. Yeah. I have a paid for account, so I have large number of copilot users available. Um, so I'm going to use that. And it's also using GPT-4 to respond. Um, don't know. It doesn't say GPT-4 in places anymore, but I'm pretty sure it's based on GPT-4. So, okay, that's the question. Yeah, defined exactly. It's the long history measurement, refinement, okay. Um, so, yeah, there are those long histories. I'm pretty sure this is from, like, Wikipedia. And, yeah, if your answer is based on that, I mean, you can give it as a historical background, but that's not the main part of the answer. Yeah, again, historical background, great. Still not what I'm looking for. Um, historical background, great. So what this is saying is, by this time, they had a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine-ish, eight to nine significant figures. This plus minus 1.1 says the 6.2 in the last couple digits is the best uh, estimate, and they are have uh, uncertainty. That says speed of light might be you know 7.3 or it might be 5.1, um, so that's what this uncertainty is. But you know even one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ish significant figure, it's uh, different from infinite number of figures. So how did they get to have infinite number of figures? That's this. So this paragraph is actually the key piece of information that I'm looking for. Um, so other than this being over long, like it's got one, two, three, four, five paragraphs to get to this, when it could have done it in maybe two paragraphs, three of those are unnecessary. Um, yeah, yeah. So speed of light has uh, defined to be this exact uh, value by how we define the length, how we define meter. So you could actually go the other way. You could uh, give a history of the definition of meter. Uh, we used to, used to define it based on the circumference of Earth. And then I think at some point there was an artifact, like a meter bar that was kept in some vault somewhere. There were copies made of it that reference meter is how we define the meter. And uh, the artifact-based measurements, the biggest downside of that is uh, uh, sometimes artifacts change. And you don't know if... Uh, you know, you, it's hard to tell, is it your reference objects that changed or is it something else? And, you know, the precision with which how you can measure that artifact also, it's got things. Um, so speed of the meter is the first of the fundamental or SI units that were defined by using um, physical constant, speed of light. And um, in the years of following, 1983, We've uh, redefined the kilogram using Planck's constant. That's fairly recent. And have we redefined the second? Um, 
So I think a second is still defined using some CGM transition. So I guess you could say uh, that is actually based on fundamental constant as well, rather than on, like anybody can build the CGM atomic clock. Uh, you don't have to have a reference object. So, so, so yeah, it's, uh, um, um, yeah, so yeah. The, this was made because the light could be measured with such high precision. So that was the way you could uh, uh, define meter more precise than you could using a physical artifact. So, so yeah, this is a good answer, just a little bit over long. All right, let's look at the next question. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, perplexed answers all five questions right. And if you're using a tool like a perplexity, my only ask to you is make, you, make sure you are using it to understand the physics, not just to get answers to submit. Um, you might, in your case, you might have like read it through and you might have follow up questions, some back and forth. Like, like, yeah, please do that. Make sure you are trying to understand physics. Yeah, that's how, that's a, Define that why is it always greater than or equal to one? Because light slows down in a medium other than vacuum, maybe. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, greater because in any medium is always, yeah. Although, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, in linear optics, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in like uh, upper division graduate nonlinear optics, you can find the situations where index of, index of refraction is greater than one, negative. And <laughs> we're not getting there, so yeah. yeah. This is, I think, a good answer. Uh, special cases. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So it's actually talking about that. Yeah, it doesn't have only happen with X rays. It also can happen with uh, visible light. Uh, visible light. If you have a medium that's uh, has like absorption transition, uh, so nonlinear optics. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's good. Um, good answer. It even uh, brings up the special cases. And, and what's the reference it's using? That's uh. uh that's interesting. Wikipedia, uh, maybe they are talking about anomalous uh, index of refraction. That's where it's coming from. Dispersion, um, yeah, nonlinear optics, yeah, yeah. Although, would that be where it's coming from? No, I don't know. Um, maybe complex. Yeah, I guess this is the section that it's referring to. Yeah. Anyways, good answer. Uh, let me just go to the next. Uh, and, you know, that's the kind of thing that you can do with the per That's one of the reasons I like a perplexity better. I think if you are trying to use this tool to help you learn, uh, perplexity is better than ChatGPT because it gives you links and you can go read those cited links. Maybe some of them cover the material that we didn't cover in the textbook or my lecture. Um, yeah, comparing contrasting. Reflection and refraction. Yeah, so it should tell, tell you about law of reflection and uh, Snell's law. Um, uh, angle, yeah, that. Um, yeah, yeah. Good description. And Snell's law, okay. Uh, is it doing, it's not doing comparing and contrast, right? It's just stating these two things. Um, Predicting reflection. Uh, yeah, how, what law tell you how to, yeah, yeah, it, this is just me trying to make sure you mention Snell's law. But it's not really doing compare and contrast. Uh, it's not really following directions, but in terms of giving information on laws of reflection and refraction, sure. Yeah, that, it's fine. <laughs> not a problem. Uh, okay. Um, I guess you would use critical angle. Um, which I think one of your homework questions in the problem set uh, involves, which I'll try to do at this session. Um, yeah, total uh, critical angle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, then in, that occurs, and you see, see that the angle where the transition happens. Uh, yeah, yeah, so hey, it's a good answer. Again, if you're using it, um, just make sure you're using it to learn, not um, uh, cut corners. <laughs> or if you're going to cut corners, cut corners to learning. Okay, last question. I think uh, in this set, it's answering all of them right. Uh, I was wondering if uh, in modern physics, um, perplexity would do better. There were some topics in like special relativity that uh, ChatGPT wasn't answering well, um, but perplexity might uh, with the GPT-4, I mean. Uh, 
uh, like this is however um, how would they phrase it uh, so you should have phrased it in the sense of how the the additional polarizing filter changes the polarization state of light because the first the polarized light second be with the blocks this not point here yeah, okay between the two uh, that's not quite right. Uh, the after going through the intermediate polarizer, it's not partially polarized. It's uh, still fully polarized. There's a linear polarization that's 100 percent ideally. Um, so that's not right. Amount of light passes uh, depends on the angle. Yeah, that's actually important. And pass it. Uh, that's the correct answer. I don't know if it will explain it. Okay. It's then partially blocked by second filter but not completely so yeah components of light electric field that's what you should focus on um, I think this is reasonable um, mm, yeah, yeah yeah you do use Malus's law and uh, Malus's law actually comes from doing this analysis a component of electric field being aligned with optical axis um, at 45 degree angle to zero, yeah, and uh, to justify that fully, you do need uh, some math, which I don't think you are required to for this question. It's a conceptual question, so so yeah, so it's a reasonably good answer. The only part where I'll um, I'll take an issue with it. So partially blocked is fine. That's uh, basically what Malus's law is describing. You know, when theta is ninety degrees, then cosine of that is zero. So it's completely blocking but when theta is not 90 degrees or 270 degrees then um, then yeah cosine is something less than one it partially blocks that's all fine where it's uh, giving a wrong statement is where it says it partially polarizes the light so uh, once you have a polarized light it's actually kind of difficult to unpolarize it so um, the, the additional elements, they don't uh, make it only partially polarized, it's still fully polarized. It's that uh, light was polarized one way after passing through something that's at 45 degrees, then the light is now at 45 degrees. So when it's uh, going through that last filter, it's at 45 degrees relative to that last filter. So, um, so yeah, other than that tiny little thing, mostly good answer. So yeah, that's a set of conceptual questions. Um, and um, yeah, in about a year's time since this came into the scene, it's gotten better um, uh, where I, I can no longer say, you know, don't use them. They give you terrible answers. Um, this is more often gives good answer than bad answer. So just make sure you're using it to learn, not cut corners or cheat. <laughs>